So the uh, pneumatic anti-shock garment or military anti-shock trousers, PASG or MAST, for a long time we just called them mask pants. These were designed originally to help treat shock. So the thought was we put these on the legs and the abdomen and we inflate them and it pushes all the blood up to the central circulation and the important stuff. And it does do some of that, but found out it really didn't save lives, um, probably hurt more than it helped, and in time it's kind of fallen out of favor. Now there still is, a, I think, a purpose for these as an air splint, especially if they have like two femur fractures, we can still use them for that. Uh, but since they're so out of favor and we didn't use them, it was taking so long to use them, they've basically been taken off almost all ambulances. So don't expect to find these devices, but just so you're familiar with them. A lot of tubing, a little foot pump, and then the clothes. So of course I would want to um, remove everything because it's going to apply a lot of pressure. So outside of class, with real patients, pants, socks, shoes, all that would, would come off. Which is okay because we're about to cover back up with some trousers. And uh, like I said Velcro can be a pain sometimes. Um, so this is in essence what they will look like if I can get this all turn the right way. There we go. So they kind of look like a pair of pants. So we typically will unvelcro all of this. So this is part of what takes some time. Getting all these things organized. When we did it regularly, we were fairly efficient at it, but it's uh, Again, we just kind of lost the art. So you line these up, you tickle them a little bit, find out where the rib cage is, because we don't want to press on the ribs, and we don't want to um, press up on the diaphragm too much. So we got to make sure we're below the the rib cage, and it has this marker for spine. So we would log roll the patient. My partner would help with that. <laughs> Go and then we tuck and we tuck and we tuck and we try to think about where his spine's going to be again, not going too high on him. About right there, we roll him back one, two, three, roll up on the other side, and then we can pull it through and then come back. And then comes the fun part because now we really have to go for all this stuff back. And you want the velcro to be fairly snug. Because I'm gonna be trying to inflate it. Um, and I don't wanna have it be loose when I start inflating it, it's just gonna take more, more air pressure. Now, if you look at the, the tubes, there's three tubes, and each one has this knob that can be turned. And when the white line is in line with the tube, it's open. When it's perpendicular to it, it's closed, just like most other gauges and things. I'm gonna open them all up right now. And then I'm gonna look at my foot pump. And I usually have one long and two that are about the same. So that one would go to the belly, these would typically go to the legs, but it really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna hook one into each of them. Now, I'm gonna close off the belly because I don't want to inflate the belly right now. If I had just one leg that was broken, let's say it was just his left leg, I'd go ahead and close the right leg. If I'm doing it for shock, um, a lot of times we'll still start with just one leg, but you could do both at the same time. At this point then, since this one is open, I'm going to start in my pump, I believe. It's a... Uh, There should be a valve here that allows air in, but not out. So I'm trying to cover that up and see if I can inflate it. I don't think it's inflating. It is. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. 
So this is really slow. <laughs> Let's see the plate a little bit. So the idea is you inflate that. And when there's enough pressure in there, you then turn that one off. Now with mass pants using them for shock, we would inflate one leg, then reassess his vital signs to see if his blood pressure has come up. If it hasn't come up, we can do the second leg and then reassess. If it still hasn't come up, then we can do the abdomen. Now with us pushing all this fluid up into the chest, one of the concerns is that this may cause him some difficulty breathing, so that would be the case to stop. And you have to listen to his lungs because you may put him into like heart failure. So you have some pulmonary edema. So if you hear that, you would stop. One leg, then the other leg, then the abdomen. And when you're done inflating that, you make sure that it's perpendicular so it's closed off. Then we load him on our backboard and transport him. So you can see this takes some, takes some time and why it's out of favor. Now, when you get to the hospital, um, you can release it a little bit, or you can release the valves here. These are pop-off valves. Um, so if you do put too much pressure in there before you hurt them, that will release. Uh, you notice the do not cut, because we don't want these cut off the patient because they're very expensive. Um, we also don't want the nurses or the doctor to go, what are these things, and just start. Because as soon as I do that, all the pressure is then released, and we could put, a, I have a reverse tap where all the blood flow then flows back down to the legs, kind of like compartment syndrome or compression syndrome. So those are mass pants.